inheritance from the Lord, the next generation of the faith and the hope of our community. But they live in a world where they're bombarded on every side with daily attacks from the enemy that seek to influence and infect them at every level of their being. Father, we ask that you would guard their hearts and minds against any advancements of the enemy that may try to come through their video games, through media, or any other digital or cyber encounters. We pray against and bind the spirits of suicide, guilt, depression, abandonment, fear, disobedience, idolatry, fornication, godlessness, confusion, slothfulness, apathy, and rebellion. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we cast you forth from their hearts, their minds, and their spirits. Testing, testing. Testing, testing.
Let us give thanks unto the Lord until this day a child is born. Let's give God a hand of praise. Please stand. Um, we, just a minute. We're waiting for just a couple more people to come in. Please stand for our call to worship. Isaiah 9th chapter, verses 6 and 7, ESV translation. Let us begin. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Amen. Please keep remain standing for our hymn. O come all ye faithful. led by Brother Benjamin Bryant. May we pray. Father, thank you. We thank you for this day. A day that wasn't promised, Lord, but you blessed us again. 
to see this day. So, Lord, as we just look back, as we about to close 2021, this time last year, Lord, we didn't know what tomorrow may bring. But trusting and believing in you, Lord, you have brought us through. For that, Lord, thank you. You've been good to us when we wasn't good to ourselves, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we just thank you for one another. Because we are family. We have each other to lean and depend on, along with your darling son, Jesus. Just thank you, Lord, for new covenant. And for one another, Lord. Lord, thank you for our shepherd. Just we are blessed. You bring us the word of life. Where we can just be a sermon to those less fortunate than us. To see the goodness that you have blessed us to do. Lord, just thank you. We can never thank you enough. But we just want to thank you one more time. For your darling son, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for the ones who've been in the hospital, who've gone through some serious medical issues, but you brought them through, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we just remember the people that's going through the situation with this weather and the tornado, but you brought them through. As tragic as it may have been, you brought them through. Thank you. Lord, just thank you. As we always remember our loved ones, who's going home to glory, Lord. They're always on our hearts and our minds. And we want to just say thank you for the time we had with them. And Lord, we just thank you. And whatever you're doing in this season, please don't forget about us. Thank you for your darling son, Jesus, the only perfect lamb. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. What a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. I have something real special I need to do before the sermon, and I'm going to invite uh, Brother Jeffrey Cooper Jr. to come and join me uh, here. Uh, up high. We, we, we're going to have him high and lifted up this morning. Come on. Come on, Jeff Jr. Give him a hand. I know. I know you don't like this, but yeah, that's all right. Listen, he is such an excellent young man. And, and uh, good. Uh, as the old folk where I grew up in the country, they would say, good upbringing, yeah, <laughs> good, good upbringing. Well, uh, one, if you look at the intersection of State Road 200 and 27th Avenue on the College of Central Florida's billboard, Jeff is featured. Uh, how about that? Yeah. A celebrity among us, and uh, <laughs> this is his first year, college year, and I uh, uh, also have uh, uh, Sister Dolores Johnson wrote a book, and, uh, and uh, she has sold a book, uh, Truth Has Wings, uh, a wonderful book, and uh, from some of the proceeds of her book, she set aside for a scholarship. And so uh, Ms. Johnson asked, uh, she's not here uh, this morning, couldn't be here this morning, but she asked uh, that I uh, read this uh, to Jeffrey Cooper and also that I acknowledge any of the sisters on the move that might be present. And I'm going to tell you who the sisters are because they be moving, all right? <laughs> uh, Dolores uh, Johnson, uh, if you're here, I want these sisters to stand uh, when I make the presence, so that I can make the presentation. Beverly Braxton, is Miss Beverly here? Okay, uh, Beverly Baker, Janet uh, Griffin, uh, Janet Sullivan, uh, Arjunatu Florence, in uh, uh, Alva Samuel, Angela White, Joyce Thor, and Rhonda Folks. Uh, those are the sisters on the move. Okay, I'm going to do as Sister Johnson said. She says, Jeff Jr., even though I don't know you personally, I am impressed by what I have heard about you. You have worked hard toward your goals, and with perseverance, you will continue to achieve them. This scholarship is being presented to you as a result of proceeds from my book called The Truth Has Wings. It is presented on behalf of the Sisters on the Move. Best wishes. And there is a check here, a cashier's check, so it will cash. Yeah, $500. Wow. With a certificate, beautiful certificate. So, there you have it. Yeah, with your bad self. <laughs> you want to say something? You might, might stick to the pulpit there. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for my church family because without you, I couldn't be the person I am today. And without Pastor Jacobs and everyone that's been here since my family moved to Ocala, you've helped us all become one whole big family. And I'm just happy. Good man, good. We love you, Jeff. Love you, love you, love you. All right. All right. 
and uh, uh, we want to give a shout out to Jeff Parents. Yeah. yeah, all right. Because chip off the block and all of that, amen. Great parents, great, great parents. Heavenly Father, we know that your spirit does the work, your spirit produces the fruit, and so we continue to pray that your spirit will teach us and transform us into the image of Christ as we open your word together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our message this morning is titled, A Distinguishing Mark of a Christian. A distinguishing mark of a Christian. Big group of people out there. So how do you know who's a Christian? Who's not a Christian? Is there a way that you can tell? Is there a sign? Something that sets a Christian apart. Something you can look for, something tangible that you will know this is the real deal, not a counterfeit or a hypocrite. Yes, but a Christian. Well, listen to what John says, the apostle. First uh, John chapter 1, 4 verses. We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen, we saw him with our own eyes, and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one, who is life itself, was revealed to us, and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father. And then he was revealed to us. Here it comes. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. The Apostle John uses two functional words in the passage. One is fellowship. The other is joy. Fellowship and joy. No fellowship, no joy. What is it about a Christian, a child of God. What is it about us that sets us apart from everyone else? Listen, doesn't make us higher or better or what, you know, nothing like that. I'm saying what distinguishes us as God's children? Fellowship. Joy. Fellowship, the Greek word koinonia, means to share in common, to intersect the life of another. And then joy, chara, it's a Greek word, that which is produced by the Holy Spirit is it's the result of koinonia. John says that in the life of every Christian, yes, in my life and also in your life, there should be three types of fellowship. Fellowship with God, fellowship with Jesus Christ, and fellowship with each other other. It distinguishes us from everybody else. 
Yes. And all three must be present if you want joy. I mean, you may settle to be happy, but I would much rather have joy. You can get happy about something. Happiness has to do with your surroundings. You can be happy that, you know, you found a $50 bill outside. You get all happy until you find out it's counterfeit. <laughs> now your happiness is gone. Yeah. But you will have joy no matter what your circumstance, what your situation, no matter what's going on around you, no matter how hard times get, no matter what you have to face, when you have joy, it is an internal state of gladness, of, of being that is produced by the Spirit of God in you. So it has nothing to do with, with what's going on around you. I mean, folk could get mad because you have joy when they were trying their best to give you sorrow. It, it, it agitates people who want you to have sorrow, but yet there you are with that uh, joy. How do I get there? How do I get there? The text says that I need these three types of fellowship. First, fellowship with God. That's a big, big, big picture there because God is the creator and sustainer of the whole universe. And God is holy. He is separate and distinct from his creation. God has perfect righteousness, so anyone who wants to be in his presence or wants to share fellowship with God must also have perfect righteousness. Well, that's not us. Isaiah tells us that all of uh, our righteousness is as filthy rags before the holy God, even when we do things that are morally good. That's not enough to match the perfect righteousness of God. So how can I have fellowship with God when God is perfect righteousness and I'm so much less? What answer is final forgiveness. Uh, some theologians use the term forensic forgiveness because it's a technical term, meaning that the problem with fellowship and fellowship with God is sin. God can't abide sin. And we are all sinners. All of us continue to sin and fall short of the glory of God. So how can I have fellowship with God? I need final forgiveness. How do I get it? I place faith alone in Christ alone that when he paid my sin debt on the cross, he totally, completely paid my sin debt. And when God raised him from the dead, God judicially declared my sin debt paid. Now, Watch this, my sins will never come up before me again. My sins will never come up before God. Why? Because Christ has paid my sin debt. And when I place my faith in Christ, God takes that faith and he covers me in the perfect righteousness of his dear son so that now when he looks at me, he doesn't see Stanley. But he sees the reflection of his own son. Oh, hallelujah! It's called imputed righteousness. Uh, uh, that, 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 that's, that's righteousness that was credited to your account. It was counted to you. Yes. So now, because of final forgiveness, I have fellowship with God, but I also need fellowship with Jesus Christ. What's that about? And how is that fellowship different from fellowship with God? 
Well, final forgiveness gets me in the kingdom, gets me saved. But now that I'm saved, I find out that I still mess up. Anybody in here ever uh, realize that there, there are times that you mess up? I mean, I know some of you just don't mess up anymore. You, you, you just stopped that a long time ago. But, but there, are, there are a few of us, at least one or two of us, that we just keep messing up. And then there, there are times when, when the very thing I get up and say I'm not going to do, that's the very thing I end up doing. I, Apostle Paul put it, they say, oh, wretched man that I am, who, who, who's going to deliver me from this body of sin? He didn't say, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Why? Because he's our advocate. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, pleading for us. So that when we mess up, we can go to him and get fellowship forgiveness. Because our mess ups break, watch this, our fellowship, but we are still in the family. Don't lose the relationship, but I mess up the fellowship. We're seeing, even after we're saved, we continue to do stuff. At least some of us. All of us. So how do I get fellowship forgiveness? First John 1, 8 and 9. Listen carefully. This is it right here. John says, if we say we have no sin, refusing to admit that we are sinners, we delude and lead ourselves astray, and the truth is not in us. But if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us continuously from all unrighteousness. That's how we maintain fellowship, by confessing our sin. And guess what? He forgives us of our sins and cleanses us of all unrighteousness, and so we get to reset. Isn't that awesome? Have you ever, you know, you're working with just technology? See, I know when I work with technology and I get, you know, all crossed up with it and tied up with it and so forth, and I don't know how to get out of what I'm in and don't know how I got to where I was, I hit the reset. You say, well, Pastor, I don't have a reset. Unplug it. Unplug it, count to 12, and plug it back in. You say, Pastor, Ed, it works for Pastor. I he reset. And so listen, when we get out there somewhere, we don't know how we got there, we keep messing up, we're in a bad place, hit the reset. How do you do it? Say a simple prayer, Heavenly Father, I know that I've messed up. I'm out here. I don't know how I got here, but I confess my sin. I'm here. Please forgive me of my sin, specifically whatever that is, and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. When you say cleanse me of all unrighteousness, that gets the stuff you forgot about. Because you've done some stuff you forgot about. And so it gets everything. You get to reset. And that's fellowship forgiveness. But then this third type of fellowship might be the most difficult of all. Uh, isn't that something? Because it's not the fellowship with God or the fellowship with Jesus Christ, but it's the fellowship with each other that se seems to give us a problem. You know, you say, I can get along with God and get along with Jesus, but it's my neighbor. Yeah. It's my wife. It's, it's my husband. It's my children. It's the person on the pew, five pews back. That's why they five pews back. Yeah. Listen, listen. Not only does he want us 
to have fellowship with him, fellowship with his son, but he also wants us to have fellowship with each other. That's crucial, critical. Why? Because the world is watching. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? The world is watching. And how will people know that you're really for real? How will people know that you, they can really trust this Christianity? What, what is it? Why? Because they watch you. They can see you, how you deal with one another. Yes, hmm. So we need family forgiveness. Fellowship, uh, final forgiveness, takes care of sin. Keeps us in fellowship with, with God. Fellowship, uh, forgiveness, gives us the opportunity to reset our lives, our, our day, <laughs> so that we can get back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ, his son. But then family forgiveness gives us the ability to have fellowship with one another even though we continue to fall short of God's glory. Listen, th this is breaking news. There are no perfect husbands. There are no perfect wives. There are no perfect children. There might be some perfect grandchildren. <laughs> well, there are a lot of different definitions for perfect. You know, you, perfect can be complete, mature. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm just a grandpa, you know. And I, but I'm going to tell you, there are no perfect grandchildren. You just get to send them home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. That, watch this. Uh, everybody won't tell you, but there are no perfect pastors. No perfect deacons, no perfect choir, no perfect ushers, no, no perfect whatever no perfect people. Are you still with me? So, how do we have fellowship with one another when we have a tendency to agitate, irritate, offend, and, and whatever else? One another. <laughs> Family forgiveness. Jesus spoke of it, and you know, it's right there in what we call the disciples' prayer. Some call it the Lord's Prayer. Some call it the Our Father Prayer. But it's right there. It's just that we read by it too fast. Here it is, Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Jesus is speaking, and he says, If ye forgive men their trespasses, all right, that's your brothers and sisters, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if Ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And so you remember you were learning that prayer, and, and you get to that part, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And so you thought that meant that they got onto your property by mistake. So you issue them a trespass warning as to end up. No, that, that's their brother or sister who has said something about you or who have done whatever it is that irritated you, that, you know, that wronged you. And the Lord says the key to fellowship with one another is forgiving one another. The result is joy. That's how you get there. Fellowship with God, fellowship with Christ, fellowship with each other results in joy. That which is produced on the inside by the Holy Spirit, which the world didn't give and the world can't take away. As I close, I'm reminded of the prophet Nehemiah who had rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem, and with that remnant that had come back with him, 
he called them together, had the priests to read from the word of God. And as the priests read God's word, the people realized we really haven't been living up to the standard that God has prescribed for us. We, we we're far away from what God, and so they became very sorrowful and, and they were grieved. Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 10. Nehemiah says, wait, wait, hold up. Hold, don't be sorrowful. Don't embrace grief, not now. He says, remember this, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So how are you going to get through the pandemic? Remember the joy of the Lord is your strength. How do I get that joy? Fellowship with God, fellowship with Christ, fellowship with one another. How am I going to get through all these things that are plaguing my mind and, and my spirit? Remember the joy of the Lord is your strength. How am I going to get that joy? Fellowship with God, fellowship with Christ, fellowship with one another. It results in joy, unspeakable joy, indescribable joy, unmeasurable joy. That the world cannot give and can never take away. Maybe you're here today having heard the gospel. You may say to yourself, how shall I respond if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, you can today. You can make that decision, greatest decision you ever make in your life. Or maybe you hear you know Christ is Savior, but you're not connected to a local church, a place where the gifts and abilities he pours into us upon salvation they overflow in ministry to others. If that's you, as we stand, will you come? We have counselors who can help you make that decision. If that's you today, we invite you to come. visited our offertory uh, boxes located around the sanctuary if you need it to. Uh, if not, please do so immediately following the benediction, our offertory prayer. Father, we thank you for these offerings that have been received. We ask that it could be continually used locally, nationally, and internationally for the uplifting of your kingdom. We just thank you for one another and thank you for what we have. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. If you are here today and this is your first time uh, visiting with us and you don't mind giving us a wave so we can do our best to make you feel welcome. Any first timers? We had one at 8 o'clock. How about that? All right. Well, praise God. Praise God. Deke has a, a, a popping announcement to make. <laughs> been blessed with a lot of popcorn so if you want some popcorn please meet me in the back of the church at that bike door and we can have some popcorn All Merry right. Christmas yeah. Yeah. Now, he didn't tell you that he has 300 cans of it <laughs> so he's hoping you'll get one for your neighbor for your neighbor's children for your neighbor's cat and all, all that alright we'll be passing out popcorn amen Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Our prayers uh, go out to Sister Constance Spain, our sister uh, Constance, uh, who uh, uh, 
her sister passed away suddenly uh, this past week. And so uh, undergird Constance and her family uh, with uh, your prayers, our prayers. Uh, the funeral service will be held on Thursday, December the 30th, up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I believe Constance will be traveling there for the service. And we just want to keep her and the family lifted up. Amen. Amen. Um, we will not gather uh, here for Christmas as we normally do for Christmas Day worship service. I will post a Christmas message on Christmas Eve. Uh, Benny said she'll get it on to the website. It'll be on Facebook so that you can watch it as, at, at your leisure, uh, but uh, I have opted not to gather on, on Christmas Day. Uh, I'm sure you know if you're keeping up and uh, as the building administrator, I have to keep up with this kind of thing, but the Omicron variant is uh, infections are doubling every two to three days. And the uh, uh, Delta variant is uh, up 40% in the U.S. in infections. And uh, the medical professionals are uh, anticipating a hard winter with the flu and, and, and the two variants and, and all of this. Uh, so that is just to say, continue to be vigilant. Continue to uh, uh, wear your mask. Uh, even if you've had the shots and the booster and so forth, the Omicron is highly contagious, this, so forth and all. So uh, we're continuing to trust God, amen? Yeah. Uh, but we're going to also do our best to mitigate uh, these things. So uh, that's why I haven't done any more here than I have. And I know it's been a long time since we've been able to have ministry meetings and gather and do the things we are so used to doing. But uh, in actuality, a major portion of our congregation uh, is of that age group that is considered high risk. Do I have anybody? I'm high risk. And, you know, both of my brothers are gone to COVID, both, inside of a year, both brothers gone, you know. So it's a serious thing, and uh, sometimes we get tired of being tired of all of this and just want to go on and do whatever you want to do, and it can be a deadly mistake. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so I just want to encourage you uh, to continue to, uh, to be vigilant and know that God's got this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, whenever the Lord releases us, then, you know, we'll go back to doing what we need to do and we'll be glad to do it. Amen? Amen. Sister Beverly, do you have a angel tree and angel tree update? Where are we with angel tree project? Okay. Okay. All right. And again, we're going to make sure that all 75 are taken care of and we'll make sure those children are are receive a blessing for Christmas. Amen. And uh we appreciate your efforts. Amen. Well, all right. Uh even in this day and time, this is just way too early to be letting Baptist people get out of church. What, what is, anybody have a long testimony? That, <laughs> long, just, just, no, right. Oh, you're not Baptist. All right. Okay, Reverend. Give God a hand of praise for Pastor Jacob. I remember about Pastor speaking about um, 
how we offend people and don't realize we do. About 25, 26 years ago, um, pastor was, uh, was not pastoring at the time, he was evangelizing. And I was a member of this church where I, it was about 20 minutes before service and I went out into the congregation and was talking to the ladies and men, fellowshipping and I sat in this pew and the lady behind me was, I was speaking to her and the guy walked up to me and he shook my hand and I said, okay. And, and uh, I looked back, he was still there and he said, uh, I said, how are you doing? You? And so finally he said, you are sitting in my seat. <laughs> when I found out I was sitting in his seat, I got up and, you know, everything was fine. But, but you know, anyway, I just thought about it after he was, this is how we offend people, you know. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you're such a good God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We give you all praise and honor. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor, his family. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your grace and your mercy. We thank you for every member here at New Covenant, house by house and name by name. We thank you for every uh, church, Lord God, every pastor, every congregation. We lift up, Lord, uh, Sister Spain and every bereaved family. You know their hearts, Lord God. And Father, we pray that you lift them up, Lord, and you gird them up on every leaning side. We pray, Lord, uh, about healing this pandemic and the, helping the minds and hearts of these people that are strictly against it, Lord God, and won't get the vaccines. Help us, Lord, come together on one accord that we can have victory, Lord, over this plague. Because you, Lord God, are the only one that can do that. We lift up your name, Father, your holy name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Father, bless, Lord, Pastor Jacobs, Lord. Bless him, Lord, this week as he prepares for a Christmas message and for messages next week to lead this congregation. And Lord, we are so thankful. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand for our benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence in ex exceeding joy. To the only wise God I say, we glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Let the church say amen. May God bless you. Please be safe.